Friends, we are here to celebrate a God who is a joyful God. A God who takes delights in celebrating his own. This God gives us the assurance that in spite of our present predicaments and dead circumstances, there shall be a joyous end. There are a lot of beautiful things about the readings of today. Looking at the first reading, there is a promise of a banquet. And so when that time comes, of this mountain, God will prepare for us a wonderful banquet with fat things to eat, enough to drink. Everybody will have enough. And then because of this banquet and feast, four things have been promised. One, that God will take away the veil that covered people. When you are covered, it means you are not sin. When you are covered, it means you are in gloom, you are in darkness. And the first promise is that God will take the veil. The veil that is sin bring your liberty. The veil that is smoking against your marriage, your breakthrough, your success is being destroyed today in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Praise you are already gathered for the feast, and because of the feast, that is promised to us is that God will take it away then. We know that in the final analysis, we are talking about the end time when there shall be no more. And so, what happens now? I declare in line with this reading that you will not die before you die. Yeah. I also spoke about not just death, but also dead circumstances. Everything that has died in your life must bounce back to life in Jesus' name. Yeah. From the work of your hands, even to your health, whatever is not functional, we release the anointing, the option for function, so that you begin to operate in a higher level of productivity and fruitfulness. Can I hear you amen like thunder? The number three thing that is promised to us in the first reading is that God will wipe the way tears. A lot of us have cried in the course of this season. Many people are still crying, even right in this church. One thing I like about our God is when He wants to wipe away tears, He doesn't just come to you with bandage or water to wipe your family to wash your face. What God does is to go to the source and the reason for which you are crying. He handles it and automatically the tears will dry up from your face. Oh, I'm reminded of this woman, the widow of nine. They are told her only son was being taken out for burial and people were weeping. And Jesus saw the woman and felt pity for her. Jesus simply said to the woman, do not cry. But Jesus did not straight for the sun to wipe the tears. No, what did Jesus do? He raised the son to life and automatically the tears stopped flowing. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, whatever might be the cause and the reason for which you have been crying, especially the secret tears, the ones you shed, you don't want people to know. And when their breaks, you wash your face and you come out, you make, and you make up your face and you look good. So that people will not know, but in your heart of heart, you know you are in pain. May the Lord take away that pain in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the last thing promised us in the first reading is that God will take away reproach and shame. In line with the word of God in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7, the word of God says, For all you are shamed, God says, I will give you double. Yeah. Why double? To make sure that there is a compensation for all the time you have lost, for all the things you have lost. So the word of God is sure. When it says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts and the canker worms have eaten. He will restore to balance the ones you've lost and he also give you more for you to live on. Therefore, child of God, because you are here and we have gathered for this banquet, the feast of the Eucharist, may the Lord take away your shame in Jesus' name. Yeah. The marital shame, the financial shame, the accommodation shame, whatever you are going through, the shame in your relationships, by the grace of God is taken away today. Yeah. Can I hear your amen loud and clear? Yeah. This is St. Paul talking to his friends. The Paul we are talking about here is representative of all of us in this church. What about Paul? What can we talk about him in this second reading? 
In his life, Paul faced hardship. In his ministry, Paul faced persecution. In his apostolate, God, Paul knew what it meant to be hungry. In of pain, Paul did not give up. Why? Because he had people who supported him. Don't forget that Paul is writing this letter from the prison in Ephesus to thank them for keeping him alive in the moments of pain. So the Philippians became helpers to Paul, especially in his moments of need. So the second reading of this mass is Paul's gratitude and appreciation and also asking the good Lord to bless them for all the support he, they have given to him. The supporters of the church, the lovers of God, that the good Lord in his love and mercy will bless you and reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Paul did not die. Paul did not give up because he had helpers. May God give you helpers who will take care of you. May God give you helpers who will make the burdens of life easier for us. I want to bless you with the rema from this gospel. The number one rema from the gospel that is very deep and dear to my heart is that there was a surprise. The people who were invited at the last points we are not even prepared. This invitation just met them. Oh, 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 oh. This new week, God in his love and mercy will surprise you. There is going to be an unexpected overflow of blessings in your life. Because of this gathering in your office, there is going to be an unexpected promotion. I had a testimony yesterday, there is a woman who has been crying. From Monday she has been crying. Why was she crying? Because she underwent a procedure. Was done and then she went and tested negative. And this woman just poured the whole anger and frustration on me. And said, Father, son, what is happening? Where is this your God? I didn't know what to say to her. I said, maybe God has something that will make you glad. Just relax, chill, chill, relax, wait on God. Father, son, praise God. I said, what is it? He said, you know what? I was busy praying and asking God for a child. Of course, I know that I, I need these babies. But you know, God surprised me. I said, what happened? Hey. I have been denied promotion for the last eight years. I did not even know. I just got a letter that I've been promoted on a Saturday. <laughs> that is the beauty of God. That is the God who said the God of surprise. May He surprise you. God will surprise you with helpers, he will surprise you with money, he will surprise you with health, he will surprise you with visas, he will surprise you with accommodation, he will surprise you with upliftment, he will surprise you with announcement, he will surprise you with connection, he will surprise you with everything that is good in Jesus' name. Somebody is not a God who promises and fails. As the Lord names, there will be a child in that room. As the Lord lives, you will be married. As the Lord lives, there must be a change of story. God gave Gideon a surprise. When Gideon did not expect, the angel of God showed up. And that was his deliverance. And the angel of God said to him, even though you are hiding right now, but because God has remembered you today, you will be the leader and you are a warrior. And you will lead your people. Therefore, may God do something that will make you, that will elevate you, that will make you the pillar that will bring deliverance to your family. The day that God remembered David, David was not there for the preparation. All the people were prepared, David was still in the bush. It was at the last moment, when it was a all hope is gone, that David was remembered and brought out. And when David was brought out, he became the anointed, he became the celebrated, he became the leader and the king. In fact, because of that anointing, God made a way for him. God gave him a job, the power to make Goliath up. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that your elevation and connection will be sudden and unexpected. For all your years of labor, God is going to...
to surprise you with favor. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, ah, ah. The last of the surprises that is very sweet in my soul is a surprise that was given to the lame man, the paralytic at the beautiful gates. Every day they will bring him and keep him at the beautiful gates, he will beg. And after begging, give him a few things. And those who brought him will come and take him away. Next day they will bring him and they will keep him there. So he will used to sit at the particular spot. Then the day God remembered him, it was at the moment of prayer, the hour of prayer. Just as we have gathered in this church, beloved friends, we are told Peter and John were coming into the temple, and the man thought it was just the usual making, maybe some coins or silver. But that day, Peter said to him, Oh, silver or gold, I don't have, but such as I have is what I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That was a divine surprise. And from that day, the man's story changed. Therefore, because we have gathered in this church today, may the God who is full of surprises also do something that will change your story in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What happens when God surprises a man? His status changes, his story changes. Oh, when God remembers a man, he gives you a testimony that cannot be denied. Listen about that particular paralysis. We are told when he was in the temple, people were saying, is that not the man? Who used to sit and pray? Some people said, Naim is that old. Some people said, He is not the one. So there was confusion about the statue. Something different had happened to him. May God give you a blessing that will confuse the enemies. I said, Because of this statue, you are receiving a blessing that will put confusion in the minds of your enemies. Oh, 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 oh. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Psalm 23 is meant that God will prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. That is a surprise. Perhaps the enemy is so who wouldn't believe that there can be a joyful celebration, there can be a party in your honor. So God preparing a table means seven will throw a party for you. It's going to be a wedding party, it's going to be a Thanksgiving party for your new job, for your promotion, for your new house, for your new car. Oh, a party is going to be thrown for the new children God is giving to you. And even those who may say, over my dead body, will you have children will be there on that party. And they will know that you are serving the bigger God. So, child of God, if you know that your God is the bigger God, jump up and shout in seven. You forget every other thing I have said today. Remember one thing that we are serving a God of surprise and that your God is the bigger God. Let's give that God a clap offering.